In the heart of Sleepy Forest was a farm. This farm was like no other you have heard of before, for you see, all the animals on this farm were extra special. They could all talk. There were chattering cows and gossiping sheep, outspoken pigs and fast-talking chickens, as well as sweet-talking horses and gabbling geese, all living together on this farm. The animals were so clever they could all look after themselves. But the farmer worked hard anyway, tending crops for them to eat and bringing them everything they needed. Plus, he lent a listening ear from time to time to whatever chattering animal needed one. Aside from their chattiness, the animals were fairly normal. Except for one. On one dark, starry night, the farmer was enjoying his dinner in his farmhouse when he heard a cacophony of grunting coming from the pig pen. The pigs were usually fast asleep by now, so he thought it very peculiar. The farmer rose from his dinner table and wandered out to the pig pen. A beam of sunlight shone down onto the pig pen like a spotlight on a stage. It was very unusual. But what was even more unusual was that nestled in the corner of the pen was a tiny little piglet. At first glance, the farmer was ecstatic to see that a new piglet had been born on his farm. But when he looked closer, he noticed something that blew him away. Sprouting out of the piglet's pink back, was a pair of small, feathery, white wings. The farmer stepped closer to take a better look, and the tiny piglet gazed up at him with her big brown eyes and snorted a cheerful greeting. Her coiled-up tail began to wag like an excited puppy, and her feathery wings started to flutter on her back. To the piglet's own amazement, she lifted up into the air, aided by her miraculous wings, and she magically hovered in front of the farmer's face. The farmer caught the tiny piglet before she could float away, and he cradled her in his arms affectionately. The baby piggy snorted with happiness and fell asleep in his arms. The farmer was smitten and named her Pippi. Pippi grew up alongside the other pigs on the farm. The farmer never treated her any more favorably than the others, but Pippi had understandably become somewhat of a celebrity in Sleepy Forest. Nobody had ever seen a flying pig before. And so creatures came from all over to visit the farm, just to see Pippi and get her autograph. Pippi was always very gracious and posed for pictures with her fans, and the other farmyard animals delighted in all the visitors who came by and brought them treats. They loved all the attention too. Do you like being a celebrity, Pippi? Polly the pig asked one day. I would love to be famous, Perry the piglet added. I love the idea of everyone knowing my name and thinking I'm amazing. Pippi nodded her head modestly and admitted that it was nice being so well known. Everybody was always very complimentary and kind when they came to meet her. But Pippi did sometimes wish that she was known for something more spectacular than just her wings. Yes, she could fly, and the other pigs couldn't, but she hadn't really achieved anything impressive using her wings. She simply had been born with them, and every now and then she would float around with them and show off her miraculous skills when fans came to see her on the farm. Pippi longed for an opportunity to use her wings to do something impressive. 
Pasha Pig suddenly had an idea and suggested, If you want to do something impressive with your wings, Pippi, why don't you enter the fantasy flying race? Pasha pointed to a poster stuck to one of the nearby trees and Pippi floated over to inspect it. It was an advertisement asking for contestants to compete in an upcoming race through the skies. All creatures that could fly were welcome to join in the race to see who was the fastest flyer in Sleepy Forest. The winner would win a special trophy and two vouchers for dinners at the all-you-can-eat buffet. Pippi licked her lips at the thought of going to a restaurant where she could eat as much as her piggy belly desired. But the bit that piqued her interest the most was the thought of winning the trophy for the fastest flyer. If Pippi won that race, then she would finally feel like she had achieved something to warrant being so famous. Pippi looked at the date of the race. It was next Saturday. She had one week to prepare and train for the race, so she set to work immediately. Pippi's feathery wings were healthy and strong, and she regularly used them to float around the farm. However, she had never truly pushed her flying skills to find out her full potential. She had always been cautious not to fly up too high in the sky, in case she lost sight of the farm and couldn't find her way back. She had also never pushed her wings to the limit to see how fast she could go. Pippi didn't want to get to the race and test it all out for the first time, so she set to work practicing. On the first day of training, She enlisted the help of a giraffe to help her bravely rise up into the air as high as she could. She felt comforted by having a giraffe by her side. They were used to having their heads up in the trees and close to the clouds, so they could help her get used to such tummy-turning heights. Pippi met up with Gingy the giraffe, who had kindly offered to help. Pippi had to crane her head to look up at her training partner. Gingy was perfect. Pippi could hardly see her face from so low down on the ground. It was time to get used to floating up to the tops of the trees. Pippi was a little nervous, but her coach, Gingy, was patient and reassuring. Gingy instructed Pippi to take a deep breath and relax. Try not to overthink it, Gingy recommended. How do you usually make yourself fly? Pippi thought. When Pippi flew, it was usually because she was happy or excited. Gingy smiled. That was perfect. Gingy ordered, close your eyes and think about something that makes you happy. Pippi did as she was told, shut her eyes and started thinking about her friends on the farm. She remembered how the geese had made her laugh this morning as they chased each other around the yard and her wings began to flutter. Pippi took a deep breath and relaxed as she recalled this happy memory. Her wings began to flap up and down, lifting her body off the ground. Good, Gingy encouraged her. Keep thinking those happy thoughts and keep breathing. As Pippi's piggy body floated higher and higher into the air. She felt her happiness growing and growing. She felt as light as a feather 
and her heart felt warm and fuzzy from all the good thoughts. After a few moments, Gingy told Pippi to open her eyes. As Pippi did, she realised that she was face to face with the tall giraffe. Pippi glanced down at the forest floor and realised that she had floated up so high that she could touch the treetops if she wanted. The flowers below looked like tiny colourful dots from up here. Pippi grinned and snorted with joy. She had never risen up so high before. This was ideal practice for her to get used to flying high for the race. She hugged Gingy around her long, slender neck and thanked her for her patience and effective coaching. On the second day, Pippi decided to practice flying as fast as she could. The fastest animals she knew were the horses on the farm. They were always racing around. Pippi and the horses assembled at the edge of the farmer's field, just on the outskirts of Sleepy Forest. The plan was that the horses would gallop across the field to the other side, and Pippi would race them using her wings rather than her legs. Pippi brought along her friend, Pasha Pig, to be the referee and time Pippi on her stopwatch. Pippi and the horses lined up. Pasha set the timer and counted down. Three, two, one, go. The horses shot off across the field like cannonballs, and Pippi flapped her wings as hard as she could to follow them. By the time Pippi reached the other side, all of the horses had beaten her, and Pippi was exhausted. The horses reassured Pippi that she would get faster. Don't worry, Pippi, they said. We've been running and racing for years. You will get faster every time you practice. So they all waited for Pippi to catch her breath before they raced again, back to the other side of the field. Pippi was disappointed when she came in last again, but Pasha was timing her and declared that Pippi had beaten her speed in the race before by five seconds. That's amazing, Pippi, the horses cheered. You're already getting faster. Pippi and the horses continued to race and practice every day in the build-up to the fantasy flying race. And every day, Pippi got faster and faster. By the time Friday came around, Pippi had beaten all of the horses to the other side of the field. Pasha Pig winked at Pippi and said, Practice makes perfect. Pippi was ecstatic and felt much more confident about competing in the fantasy flying race than she had at the start of the week. The night before the race, Pippi went to bed early. She wanted to make sure she was as well rested as possible for the next day. All night long, she dreamt of soaring through the clouds and feeling the wind in her piggy ears. It was a blissful dream. No matter what happened tomorrow, she would be the first pig to ever compete in a flying race. On the day of the fantasy flying race, Pippi headed to the starting point followed by a crowd of supporters from the farm. All of the pigs from her pen came along to cheer her on, as did the horses who helped her train, Gingy the giraffe, and, of course, the gobbling geese. 
Pippi approached the starting line nervously. She had never taken part in a race before, and certainly not a flying one. She was a little nervous to fly alongside more established flying animals, like the birds, unicorns and fairies. What if she couldn't keep up and came in last? As she lined up, She looked to her side and took note of the creatures she was competing against. There was a great bald eagle with enormous wings and a teeny grey bat hanging upside down from a nearby tree branch. Pippi spotted a bumblebee lining up, along with a scattering of other pretty bugs like butterflies and ladybirds. There were a few fairies and pixies, and even a young dragon had joined the race. A unicorn with large white wings primped and posed as they waited, and Pippi found herself growing increasingly nervous. All of these animals must have had much more practice than she had and Pippi was starting to feel a little inferior. Maybe she shouldn't compete in the race and remain on the ground just like all the other pigs. Pippi turned around and looked at her group of friends who had come to support her. She was about to tell them that she wanted to quit the race before it even began, when she noticed what they were holding. Her friends had painted a big, long banner to support her. The banner read, We love you, Pippi. And they were all wearing T-shirts with an image of her on. Their T-shirt said, Pippi the Flying Piggy, the greatest hovering hog in the world. Pippi laughed and grinned at her friends. They didn't care whether she won or not. They already loved her and thought she was incredible, and that wouldn't change by what place she came in the race. Pippi took a deep breath and thought about how happy her friends made her. Her feathery wings began to flutter and buzz with warmth. She was ready to race. The referee arrived, and all of the animals competing in the race took up their starting positions. The referee was a little penguin. The flightless bird might not be able to join in the race, but at least he could still be a part of it in some way. The penguin referee instructed the competitors to fly through the sky to the finish line on the edge of the forest when he blew his whistle. At the finish line, another flightless bird, an ostrich, was waiting to announce the winner. The finish line was signposted by a big purple flag that they would all be able to see when they lifted up into the air. The penguin began the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Every flying animal at the starting line used their wings to rise up into the air and they set off. All of the animals who had come to watch began cheering them on and Pippi's excitement made her wings flap harder and harder, so much so that she rose higher up into the air than she had ever been before. The forest floor and her friends below disappeared out of sight. She lifted up past the trees and into the open sky, close enough to touch The clouds, just like in her dream last night. 
Pippi looked round for the purple flag that signified the finish line. At first, she couldn't spot it. Pippi's piggy eyes couldn't see very far ahead, but she noticed that all the other animals were heading in the same direction, so she decided to follow their lead. Flapping her wings as hard as she could and spurred on by the sounds of her friends cheering below, Pippi flew as fast as she could through the sky. As she flew, Pippi felt the wind blow through her ears and she had never felt freer. Up here in the sky, There was so much space to fly, and the possibilities of where to go felt endless. Pippi was having so much fun that she momentarily forgot that she was competing in a race. The bumblebee buzzed past her ear, pulling Pippi out of her reverie and reminding her that she had better focus if she wanted to win the race. Pippi diverted her attention forward and flapped her wings as fast as she could. She picked up speed and jetted forward through the air, surpassing the leisurely fairies and the fluttering butterflies. She could see the dragon's mighty wings soaring ahead and the eagle pushing forward with ease. Pippi the piggy flew as fast as she could, but she was growing more and more tired with every flap of her wings. She had never had to race against such fast animals before. These well-established flyers were even faster than the horses she had trained with. Pippi was starting to feel a little out of her depth. What would everybody think of her if she didn't win the race? She didn't want to let anyone down. Pippi kept flying as fast as she could. Even when she felt like giving up, she pushed forward and thought of how great she would feel when she reached the finishing line having tried her best. To her surprise, eventually Pippi passed the unicorn and caught up with the dragon and bald eagle. They were just as surprised to see Pippi the flying piggy soaring next to them. Wow, little pig, you're doing well, the dragon commented with a smile. The bald eagle nodded. Yes, I never thought I'd see the day when a pig flew, let alone next to me in a race. Pippi stifled a smug smile and thanked them for their compliments. She kept focused on what was ahead and in the distance, at the edge of the forest, she spotted a purple flag waving in the wind. It was the finish line. The bald eagle and the young dragon noticed it right at the same time, and they all looked from one to the other, smiling competitively. Last one to the finish line is a rotten egg, the bald eagle cried before swooping down towards the purple flag in the distance. The dragon followed suit, and Pippi steered herself to follow them. She hadn't quite mastered landing yet, but there was no time to overthink it. She was in the final race to first place. Pippi the flying piggy zoomed down towards the ground, hot on the heels of the eagle and dragon. As the purple flag and the ground came clearer into sight, she could see that all of her friends from the farm 
had gathered at the finish line, ready to celebrate when she landed. Pippi flapped her wings with all her might, using up all the last dregs of energy she had left inside. She caught up with the eagle and the dragon, and they all flew head to head towards the purple flag. As the three animals sped towards the finish line, the sound of the crowd cheering filled their ears, and Pippi felt elated. She had done it. She had competed in the flying race. She passed the finish line and her trotters touched the ground triumphantly. Her farmyard friends rushed forward and embraced her in a congratulatory hug. You were incredible, Pippi, they exclaimed. Did you know? You're the first pig to fly in the sky? And next to a dragon, no less, another friend whooped. You're a winner in our eyes, Pippi. Regardless of where you have come in the race, Gingy the giraffe added, towering over her farmyard friends. Pippi felt amazing. And like she finally had a reason to be known for her unusual wings and her magnificent flying abilities. Not many other animals could say they had done what she had done. But now, it was time to find out where she had come in the race. The ostrich at the finish line and the penguin from the start conferred and checked in every animal as they crossed the finish line. Once the final fairy and butterfly had reached the end, everyone gathered around to find out who had come in first place. The ostrich and the penguin stepped up onto a large tree stump and gazed down at the crowd with the winner's trophy propped between them. Pippi stared at the shiny gold trophy and admired its splendour. It would look lovely in her pig pen, she thought. The crowd fell silent as the ostrich announced that the winner of the fantasy flying race was the bald eagle. Everyone clapped and cheered in congratulations, even Pippi. Pippi was a little disappointed that she didn't win, but she was still proud of herself for how well she had done. In fact, the ostrich claimed that it was so close between the bald eagle, the dragon, and Pippi the flying piggy that they wanted to award two runner-up prizes to Pippi and the dragon for their valour in the race. The penguin presented each of them with a mini silver trophy to take home, and Pippi's friends in the crowd went wild. Pippi couldn't stop smiling. She had never been prouder of herself. Pippi and her friends returned to the farmyard that evening and placed her runner-up trophy in pride of place in the middle of their pig pen. They wanted everybody who came by to be able to see the trophy and know just how impressive Pippi the flying pig really was. Pippi gazed at her silver trophy with satisfaction and gratitude. Not only for her fabulous wings that she had been lucky enough to be born with, but also for her wonderful friends that supported her to no end and her own ability to persevere when things got tough. Pippi 
finally felt worthy of her fame. She waggled her wings and snuffled her snout. Everything felt possible now. She drifted off into a well-deserved nap, dreaming of all the future flying adventures she was going to take. Now she had learnt to spread her wings.